first impression that I get is it's a place where you really have to put in a lot of effort. I mean, hard work, it eventually pays in the end. But more importantly, it's not just the hard work, but it's also the fun. How we effectively manage our time to combine both your work and your extracurricular activities to end up with a sort of a great curriculum which really develops a personality on the whole. The Indian Institute of Management goes way beyond personality development. Rated as one of the toughest management programs in the world to get into, it trains students to achieve socially responsive professional management skills. The formative years witnessed a collaboration with the Harvard Business School. Largely as a consequence of this collaboration, the case method of teaching forms the backbone of training at the Institute. The Indian Institute of Management has made a difference in the management of various vital sectors of the economy. The Institute trains its students to have a more pragmatic, plausible and positive approach to their work. In the early years of India's independence, Charles Eames and his wife Ray were invited to India to initiate a training for design as an aid for small-scale industries. In the process, they discovered an advanced ancient tradition in design, used for centuries with great skill. The National Institute of Design was created to breathe new life in the process of renewal and discovery. The professional courses of the Institute are divided into three main academic divisions. One is the Industrial Design Division, which has product design and furniture design. Graphic design, video programming, and animation design are areas of specialization in the communication design division. One division is dedicated to textile design and apparel design. Here, from the warp and the weft to the final garment, the student is taught all aspects of textile design. The Institute is also involved in many design projects in various areas. These include health, education and environmental conservation. As a profession, architecture was still in its infancy in India at the time of independence. The building of the new capital exposed the acute shortage of architects in the land. Walter George, a British architect and his contemporaries, made efforts to establish what is today known as the School of Planning and Architecture. The education at the school deals with the design and construction of buildings in their sociological, technical and environmental context. The school undertakes research in transport planning, urban design, landscape architecture and building engineering and management. The planning and management of human settlement is becoming increasingly complex in the present age. Good architecture never dies. It has the capacity to inspire people for thousands of years. And at the School of Planning and Architecture, students are trained to achieve the highest artistic standards. <laughs> 